Hello, Steve Vart, Trick Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, Star Trek Prodigy has actually cracked the top 10 on Netflix's charts internationally. Not in America, unfortunately. So it hasn't um, actually made like the general internet like charts, um, but it has made um, you know Netflix's top 10, but only internationally, not in America. Apparently, somewhere in the first season, um, something actually, um, actually made the top 10, but I didn't see that at the time, but apparently it did. But, um, this time it didn't get any, um, didn't really make much of an impression in America. So that's really putting the, um, the doubts on them getting a third season from Netflix. But, um, I mean, that's just fans wanting that to happen. Um, it's not going to happen if, you know, it's just not going to happen. But, um, yeah, so apparently it got in at number 10, um, in a couple places in the world, and that's because they dropped 20 episodes, because this is not based on how many people watch an episode, it's how many minutes get viewed of like a series. So if you've got 20 episodes dropping, um, as opposed to other shows that maybe are dropping one show a week or something, then you're probably going to get you know a fair amount of views per episode as a whole, for the whole series you might actually get actually into the charts, but the actual amount of people watching, and there's also a lot of fans trying to rig this, because I've seen, I've literally seen people sharing um, ways to actually bump up the views and how to watch the show and how to set it up on loops and stuff like this and all these little, it's just really, really sad to see fans so desperate for this show to, to look like it has more of a following than it actually has. Um, and, you know, the studios aren't stupid, they know, they know this sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, they're not getting third season and they really needed one because they left the show in a really bad place and left Star Trek and Starfleet in a really bad place, um, which they shouldn't have done unless they had a guarantee for a third season. But um, that's the kind of people who are running this show. But yeah, so um, yeah, Netflix, top 10 international, some places, enough people have watched um, Star Trek Prodigy for it to get into the top 10, but not in the US. And like I said, they dropped the whole season in one go, so it's not like they're going to be in the charts next week or the week after, because whoever's going to watch the show has watched it. Um, and yeah, it's going to get more views on, on Netflix. It always was going to, because it's a bigger audience than Paramount+. Plus. Paramount+, Plus is hurting Star Trek. There are people who would be watching the Star Trek shows if it was on Netflix or Hulu or, or Disney or some bigger platform who don't even know that there are new Star Trek shows because they've been limited to CBS All Access and Paramount+. Plus. Although, those same people didn't watch when it was on TV, so maybe I'm actually giving the shows more credit than they deserve. I don't know. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of um, this mild achievement. I mean, yes, they did make the top 10 by dropping 20 episodes in one go, but not in America, um, and that's the biggest market. So, yeah, no season three. I'm kind of okay with that. Part of me wanted them to come back so they could fix the mess that they made at the end of the season knowing it was the last season, but they probably would just make it worse. Because they don't care about Star Trek or the legacy or the, the universe um, that Gene created. They'd probably just make it worse, so probably better off to leave it where it is. Um, because technically, Picard picks up 20 years later and fixes a lot of the problems that what well, established happened in the past that they sort of had fun with um, at Star Trek's expense. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see.